Hello friends, this is Hedda. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am setting up my bullet journal spreads for August, which came a little too quickly to my liking, but summer always passes way too fast. Before we get into the spreads though, I just want to show you some stickers from my sticker shop. If you didn't know, I have a little online store. You can find it at ikigaipapir.com. I released some new stickers in the beginning of July and I would really appreciate it if you check them out. As you saw in my previous video, I am starting a new journal in August, so this will be the first monthly setup that I make in this notebook. It is slightly smaller than my previous two journals, but I have had smaller journals before, so I'm not completely new to this. I make a lot of mistakes in this video, so starting with the first mistake, I got out this iris drawing compass, which is not the mistake. This thing is great. Um, you can make any circle that you want, but the way that I held it when I drew the circle meant that it just completely went off in like a different line than I had anticipated. So you can see here that it's just kind of messy. I tried to fix it with a white gel pen, uh, didn't really work. So I kind of gave up and decided to come back to it later. And then I started outlining my sketch with a really thin fine liner, which is the second mistake because it turned out to be way too thin after I colored it in. But it looked really nice as line art, so I decided to make it into a coloring page for my patrons. If you didn't know, I have a Patreon where I post content monthly. There's lots of fun stuff to do over there, so you can find it through the link in my bio if you want to check it out. My theme for August is inspired by gardens and just like the feeling you get when you have your hands in the soil and you're planting things or repotting or whatever. I don't have a garden right now, but I do have indoor plants and um, I really love repotting and just taking care of them, I guess. And I always get a really great feeling whenever I go visit my parents. They have a big garden with lots of flowers and lots of plants and berries. And I just wanted that feeling in my journal for August. So my cover page is this kind of arched window with some plants and also hands reaching up towards the sun. And I actually took pictures of my own hands as reference when drawing this because for hands, I always need a reference picture because hands are really hard to draw. So I took pictures of my own hands and I tried to draw them. I think it worked out quite well. I used the hard tipped Tombow Fudenosuke to letter August beneath it. This is my favorite Tombow brush pen because it's so easy to control because of the hard nib. You can see me going over the window frame with the brush pen to make the line a little bit thicker because I wanted it to stand out a little bit more. But in the end, I go over the entire drawing because the lines were just too thin. At this point, I had decided what to do about the sun. So I just got out some regular printer paper and used the Zebra Mild Liner to color it yellow. And then I just cut it out so that I could glue it on top after I colored the rest of the drawing. I used a lot of different colors in this whole setup, but I tried to keep them quite warm because August just feels warm to me and with the sunlight and the garden and everything, I just wanted it to have this warm feeling. So I used a lot of yellows and greens and also some like neutral beige and browns and a little bit of vermilion red for that little pop of color, I guess. I have to say I'm usually a bit wary about using water-based markers to color in this way. It usually gets a little patchy and uneven. And there are of course ways to make it less uneven, I'm sure. Maybe using water and a watercolor brush, for example, or using longer strokes. But since my drawing was so small, I couldn't really 
use longer strokes, if that makes sense. So after I saw that it was kind of turning out a little bit patchy and you couldn't really see the line art anymore, I decided to go back in with my Tombow Hudonosuke, the hard tip, to make the line art a bit more defined. And I used a brush pen instead of another fine liner to just give the lines a little bit more life. And also it let me draw with a lighter hand, which I am trying to do now with my wrist being damaged, I guess. I don't know what to call it. My idea behind this drawing was that the sun nourishes the plants and the plants reach up towards the sun and so do we. We also need the sun to nourish us and that's what the hands are. They're us reaching up towards the sun just like plants because we're just like plants in a way. <laughs> Wow, can you tell that I didn't prepare any bullet points for this voiceover? <laughs> I colored in the background of the window with the Tombow Dual Brush Pen in the color 942, which is my favorite Tombow Dual Brush Pen color. I accidentally used 990 for all the yearly spreads when I was meaning to use 942, so maybe I can't recognize it as well as I think I can. I've used a lot of different markers for the setup so far. I'm just picking colors from whatever water-based markers that I think fits the best. So I'm using Tombow Dual Brush Pens, Crayola Super Tips, and also Zebra Mine Liners. And I think that they all look the same once they're on the paper, so it doesn't really matter. The last thing that I did in the spread was to make a little squiggly line around the entire drawing. And then we get to mistake number three and four. Number three being that I just forgot to film me lettering this quote by Audrey Hepburn. And number four being that I wrote tomorrow instead of tomorrow. So I just got out my printer paper again and then I glued a new word on top of it and that fixes the problem. And then we get to my calendar spread and I know from March until July, I basically made the same calendar spread every month and I thought it was time to switch it up a little bit. So since this journal is a bit smaller than the A5, I wanted to make a full page calendar and just kind of see how that felt in this new journal. So each of my boxes are five by five squares. But before making the actual calendar, I drew a bunch of doodles, I guess, that I associate with gardening and farming. So I have a bag of soil, lots of plants, gardening tools, bulbs, and even snails because there are always snails in the garden. <laughs> I have a spray bottle with water and then I also drew some jars. I recently visited my cousin's farm and they had all these jars with like really old jam and jellies and stuff and I thought that was really fun and it really gave me that farm feeling. So I drew some jars as well, honey jars and jam jars, and I just kind of placed them next to each other. There's no system or anything. Just wanted them to decorate the bottom of the calendar spread. It was really fun to just draw little doodles that weren't too detailed just next to each other because they look more detailed when put together, but each drawing is very simple. So I guess that's a trick if you aren't very good at drawing very detailed stuff because that's a skill in itself, I think, to draw very detailed drawings. I used the brush pen again to draw the outline of the calendar and I made the corners slightly rounded and then I tried to make it look as organic as possible and by that I mean I didn't use a ruler and I didn't try to make the lines perfect or anything and then I used the fine tip of the Tombow Dual Brush Pen to make a grid inside of the calendar space before drawing each box. I think this gave the calendar a really fun effect because later when I colored in everything, the spread is very colorful with very bright colors. Because of the beige grid inside of the calendar, it kind of makes sure that the calendar is still the center of attention, but it's still subtle enough that I can still see what I'm writing when I fill it in. 
For the top half of the spread, I decided to draw some clouds, which I thought could be kind of cute. And then I used stamps for the headers for each day. So I just did the first three letters of all the weekdays and this way it's not so crowded. I kind of wish I had a typewriter style of stamp set, but I don't. So I used these that I got in Tokyo. They're just kind of regular letter stamps. And then I lettered August in kind of the same style as I did on the cover page. I drew some more clouds and then I started coloring in everything. I tried to color in each of the doodles in a way that made it so all the colors were spread out evenly on the spread, if that makes sense. So I tried to make sure that all the bright colors appeared in several places and not just like in one area of the drawings. When coloring in so many different kinds of doodles with a limited color palette, it really helps me to not be so strict with what colors everything has to be. So instead of trying to make everything look lifelike and real, just kind of color it in with whatever I have, whatever works. Like I've never seen a pink snail, but it doesn't matter because it's just a fun doodle. The part of the spread that I was most unsure about was the bag of soil. I wasn't sure if I should try to like design a bag of soil or if I should just leave it empty. In the end, I decided to leave it empty and then I can fill it with something throughout the month if I want to. I'm not making a playlist spread or anything this month, so that could be an idea or it could be a little tracker or something. Haven't decided yet. Oh, and I decided to color in the clouds with this brown beige color instead of blue because I really didn't want to introduce anything blue to this color palette because blue is very cold and it, I just felt like it wouldn't fit at all. This next spread is the last spread I am making for this monthly setup and it's heavily inspired by Anna from Journal Away. If you haven't checked out her channel, you really should. She makes really amazing bullet journal setups and she makes these monthly plan spreads that I wanted to try out. I've never done anything like this before and I figured since I didn't have my regular dashboard and had just like a plain calendar instead on the previous spread it would be a good idea to try something like this so I have a section for each week here at the bottom and then I have a section for tasks that I want to prioritize for the month and then a section for tasks that I should do if I have time and then on the right side of the spread I have just a regular task list of smaller things or whatever I know that Anna usually includes tasks that she wants to move to next month, but I don't really think that that's necessary for me. I don't have that many long-term projects. It's mostly from month to month. So I'm really curious to see how the spread works out for me. It's always fun to try something new and I have felt a little bit stuck with using the same type of layouts recently. So I, you know, thought this was a great opportunity to try something brand new in this brand new journal. And then I'm not going to make any habit trackers or playlist spreads or anything for August, just these three spreads and then my weekly spreads. I used my markers to color in every other line to kind of make the sections feel more like boxes I guess or give myself more direction on where to write and then I did the squiggly lines again <laughs> around everything because it, I think it just looks nice and of course some little sparkles because everything is better with some sparkles. And those are all the spreads that I'm setting up for August. I'm keeping it very open, not making too many plans for spreads I want to fill in throughout the month. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to move into this new journal. I think it's very interesting to see how the colors that I used are actually very similar to the colors that I used in July, but the themes look completely different and has a completely different vibe. And while I show you the final flip through of the spreads, I just want to say thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you so much to my patrons for supporting me every month. It means so much to me. 
And if you watch this video all the way to the end, be sure to put an emoji that you associate with gardening in your comment below. And with that, there is only one thing left to do, and that's to wish you all a lovely day, and I'll see you next time. Bye!